Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that everybody is having an awesome, awesome uh, week. I hope that your day has gone well. Uh, I am here uh, to answer some questions that have been pointed at me. And I thought I would do it in a recording. I didn't want to do a live stream because I want to get to the point and I want to keep it as succinct as possible. Uh, in case you have been under a rock or in case you, you, you don't pay attention to a lot of what's happening in the media, whether it's social media, whether it's print media, uh, there's been an ongoing discussion about CRT or critical race theory. And there have been a number of different states that have already moved and uh, created legislation, legislation that targets critical race theory and blocks it from being a part of classroom curriculum. And there has been a big uproar about it. And so people have really started to talk about critical race theory and it has become a flashpoint. You know, it's 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 hot now. Uh, the truth of the matter is that people, a lot of people wanted me to speak on it, kind of give some insight on what critical race theory is. Uh, to talk about it and the truth of the matter is is that as an academic concept or theory critical race theory is approaching 50 years old it's not a new concept it's a new discussion primarily because uh, while Donald Trump was in office he issued an executive order that banned any type of device divisive content or concepts uh, from being a part of diversity and inclusion training for any type of federal contracts and, and immediately it stopped over 300 different trainings that were in place or scheduled based on this and one of the uh, quote unquote divisive um, concepts was critical race theory and so it erupted uh, as a number of different uh, black organizations uh, came uh, came together and uh, moved against it. Uh, it uh, it launched uh, a new uh, movement. Uh, truth be told, and it's been ongoing since. Um, what I, what I want to present to you is a basic, and I'm going to have a link to a detailed article that I am I wrote the commentary on but someone else authored from the uh, American Bar Association because the original uh, theory itself emerged from legal legal scholarship that pointed to the institutionalization uh, of racism in America and, and how it feeds a racial caste system that goes far beyond the uh, nuanced notion that Racism is simply a few bigots acting out, uh, and it explores the dynamics uh, deep within the very moral, uh, very uh, fabric of the United States of America and how it impacts us as blacks and, to a certain extent, other people of color. And I am one who is very, very, very uh, insistent upon when speaking of our people that we define ourselves as blacks or as African American or clearly define ourselves as those who are the descendants of slaves in this country so that we do not get diluted in our pursuit of what belongs to us in every facet and aspect uh, that it exists. And so we tend to be clumped in this concept or idea or notion of people of color. While we are people of color, we are black, and so that means that we are not uh, specifically uh, and directly associated with any other people of color, and we have found that in most instances, most of those people of color will not come stand with us when we are pushing and fighting for what we believe is right for us. And so we need to be very clear, any policies, any legislation, anything that um, we are looking for that is tangible needs to be very highly specific needs to be highly specific 
in identifying blacks, African Americans, as the recipients of said benefits. Uh, with that being said, uh, I would argue that critical race theory uh, has existed before it became a coined phrase in the 70s. Um, in the, uh, and that it, you can go back and look at critical uh, race theory in its definition. If you were to look up a definition of critical race theory, it would probably say something along the lines of the critiquing or interrogating of the uh, racial caste system or the uh, social construct of racism in America from an academic perspective, primarily from a legal perspective. The truth of the matter is, is that while it emerged from the legal community, we have been critiquing on an academic and scholarly level uh, institutional racism in America for nearly a century now, at least. We can go back as far as Carter G. Woodson and we can work our way up through some of the uh, jargonauts of scholarship like Dr. John Howard Clark, Dr. Dr. Y y uh, Yosef Ben Yakin. Uh, we can come on up to Dr. Naeem Akbar, Dr. Francis Chris Welsing, uh, Dr. Amos Wilson. Uh, uh, we can look at Asa Hilliard. We can keep going and we can look, and there's no shortage of scholarship who have uh, taken. Uh, to task the responsibility of identifying the multitudinous mechanisms and machinations at play as far as the uh, racial caste system in this country is concerned. Michelle Alexander did an unbelievable job in writing uh, the new uh, Jim Crow and pointing out these systems. Why, do, why I personally think that we must be ever diligent in practicing critical race theory, if you really talk to people who have an, uh, an understanding of what critical race theory is, you will find that it's not really used as a noun as much as it is as a verb. It is a practice. Critical race theory is the evolution and practice of critiquing and breaking down the social construct of race and the institutionalization of racism into the moral, uh, not into, I don't know why I keep using the word moral, uh, my mind is thinking of something else, but into the, the, the fabric of the United States. And at the very core of it is the truth. And see, when you have a revisionist uh, history that is presented as truth, consistently in mainstream and now you want to interject critical race theory there is a an immediate and diametric conflict between what will be discovered in critical race theory and what has been reported in time over time as history you will find out that there are some things that even the most astute and aware are not actually cognizant of because that's how deep it runs. You cannot search it. Neely Fuller Jr. talks and Dr. Francis Cress Wilson talks about the nine areas of human activity and how racism is functional in every last one of those areas. And when you study the will, my reason for feeling that we must really and truly be committed to it, not just resting it on the shoulders of a few scholars, but actually all becoming scholars in and of ourselves in understanding uh, race, racism as a social construct and the institutionalization of it and how it's moving throughout the corridors of our total society for this reason, because they will take people who look like us, who hold uh, academic credentials in multiple areas like finance, like politics, like uh, law, and so forth, and they will parade them before us with explanations and suggestions that racism no longer exists, that racism uh, uh, has not had as negative and devastating an impact on black people as we would perceive or as we believe and that uh, again we get back to it's all about black people not really doing what they need to do now I'm not arguing that there aren't some issues that we need to deal with within 
That's not my argument. I am not one to sit up and hope that someone else fixes my problems. I think that's something that even when it comes to racism, we're going to have to be the ones that extract power, take back power, and hold power, and execute that power to make sure we have what we should. No one's going to give us what belongs to us. We will have to, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, take it. What that means is still to be defined, but what I can tell you is we've got to be ha at a point to where we can resist the suggestions of media, the suggestions of supposed experts who present the idea that racism isn't what it is and wasn't what it hasn't been, that slavery didn't have the impact it had, that benign neglect didn't have the impact that it had, that redlining didn't have the uh, the impact, negative impact that it had, that convict leasing and black codes and and and, and Jim Crow segregation and, and 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 gentrification, mass incarceration, miseducation, all these things that are not only a part of our past but have still uh, presented themselves currently and presently in our social constructs. This is there for discovery. It is there for examination. It is there for us to become students of it, not for the point of making an excuse, but for the point of really truly letting truth sit uh, front and center and then moving from that truth to develop solutions and ideas and a sense of place and purpose because what we are being fed isn't the truth and we should be aware of that by now but many of us aren't so in essence we can go back and travel back and we have been dissecting and intersecting and and in in, in so many other ways uh anatomizing the 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 micro machinations and the macro machinations of racism in this country and there are some of us who are very, very well versed at understanding it and presenting it. I want us to become as well versed in presenting solutions. I think that that has to be a part of the dynamic. We can't consistently and ongoing uh, and, and on an ongoing level continue to talk about something without having the solutions. I'm one that I tell all, people all the time, if you want to set up a meeting with me, we have to do more than sit around and talk and set up another meeting. I need to have some actionables that we can look at and, 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 and assign and, and, and take note. I, I'm about getting it done. I'm not about sitting up and, man, we had a great meeting. Why? Because we talked a lot? No. We had a great meeting because we sit down and someone took responsibility for the tasks at hand and each person is responsible for returning with a report on how far they've gotten in the next meeting so that we know what adjustments need to be made. It has to be a situation in which we are willing to step up and go out and do the things that are absolutely necessary. So when it comes to critical race theory, it's not new. Uh, it, it, it emerged in the 70s. It picked up steam in the 80s, and it, it, it became a full-grown uh, theory uh, in the 90s. And it is kind of set quiet until it was stirred up um, over recent years. And now it's back at the front and center of conversation. And it's been mistagged, misunderstood, uh, mispresented, misrepresented. And, and, and so there are so many uh, misunderstandings about what it is. At the very core, it's simply uh, a critique of the way this country is set up and the way it runs and how it impacts us as blacks. And it is done at a scholarly level. It initi initiated in the legal sector but it has moved into the social sector, it has moved into the finance sector, it has moved into the sector of education. And so we must understand it uh, as it permeates, but there is no place that racism isn't present. Uh, and we must understand it that it is not some outdated um, um, relic. It's not a, a bygone idea or uh, social memory it is a an ever-present force that has so many different ways that it impacts us as a people and it is important that we start to practice this not just you know everybody's really upset about uh the fact that it's blocked in school curriculum actually if we take on a critical mindset and we approach everything from a place of critical thought then uh Critical race theory becomes a simple notion and concept within the black culture in the home where kids are taught to know, understand, and examine things with a critical mind and a critical eye and a lens that breaks things down so that they understand it. That's better preparing them to go out into a world that's inherently hostile towards them and not only compete but win. We don't we can't afford to wait for them to allow us to teach ourselves how 
uh, life really happens and works and what's going on in this country and what we can do about it. That's our responsibility. So we're not going to sit around and be overwhelmed by the idea that most states are moving to block critical race theory. Why? Because it's not in alignment what's in your textbooks. You're talking about a major conflict of, 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 of uh, narratives. You got the narrative that it wasn't that bad. You know, it was something we overcame. We, we got past that. And we, no, we never got past it. It just changed. It became slavery by another name. It became oppression by another name. It changed names and it morphed in shapes, but it never changed direction, forces, or intent. And so we must be willing to break that down and look at it. So we could talk about critical race theory on so many different levels. Uh, in Born in Captivity, I talked about the psychopathology uh, associated with slavery and how it permeated through generation after generation, uh, both genetically and through social learning theory and through life experience in general. And that's just one part of it. But we have to deal with the psychology of it because it is the psychology of our people as a collective that determines the force in which we move and the direction in which we move. All of the other things can be examined. Once you have a psychology of uh, of, of victory, a, victor, uh, a mindset of victory, a psychology of overcoming, a psychology of winning, a psychology of conquering, then it doesn't matter what is in front of you, you conquer it. But as long as there's a psychology of victimization, you may, you remain docile and so that's the thing that i look at i look at okay how do we change the psychology how do we change the impact of these things so that we now develop a mindset of being conquerors of winning a winning mindset and no matter what we face we find a way to win uh, it's time to stop surviving and it's time to start winning uh i just had to take this time and break this out like i said i'm going to leave this uh video I mean, uh, I'm going to leave a link to a more detailed explanation and de uh, uh, exploration of critical race theory uh, on the Odyssey Project site. So you guys can go over there and read it for yourself. Don't 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 uh, uh, forget to leave comments and share, uh, co contribute in whatever ways you want. And uh, we'll, we're going to talk about this more and examine it more and how we can use it to our benefit. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. I want to thank you guys for stopping uh, in and checking this out. You guys have a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.